Hello and good morning. Thanks for watching today's video and joining in today. So far we have covered four seasons. In season one we covered the digestive system. In season two we covered our pancreas. In season three we covered the gallbladder. And in the last season, which was season four, we covered the anatomy of the liver and things that can go wrong with our liver. Today we are starting a new season, season five, and this will focus on the spleen. So today in the video, we're going to talk about what is the spleen, where it is in our body and what it does in our body. And in the next few videos, we are going to talk about different diseases that can affect our spleen. So first thing to understand where the spleen is in our body. So I have drawn the outline of a body. So this is the right side. This is the left side. This is the umbilicus or the belly button. That is the underneath of the rib cage. this black line here. This is our breastbone starting over here and that is the underneath of the rib cage on the left side. The two nipples or the breasts. So we know where we are at the moment. This blue line I have drawn over here is the diaphragm, which again I have discussed in my previous videos, which is a strong sheet of muscle which separates our chest, where the lungs and the heart are, from our abdomen or the tummy, where this liver, which is here, underneath the rib cage, you can see the rib cage line here. River liver is tucked underneath it. Only a little bit of the liver sticks out just below the breastbone. This green bag I have drawn over here is our stomach, which again we have discussed before. And the C-shaped tube is the duodenum, which is the first part of our small intestine. And this speckled organ like a leaf I have drawn, which starts in the duodenum goes behind the stomach and goes and gets tucked into our spleen. So there is the spleen and you can see spleen is under the left side of the diaphragm underneath the rib cage. So it's quite far tucked inside the rib cage just above the stomach. Size the spleen. If you make your fist, if I make my fist like this, my size of the spleen would be the size of my fist like this. And as you can see, it will be sitting underneath the rib cage. So liver can sometimes be felt under the rib cage if we are examining the patient. However, spleen cannot be felt. If the spleen it can be felt, which means when we put our fingers under the rib cage on the left side, if we can feel the spleen and spleen has also got ridges like this, like my hand has. And if you can feel these ridges, which mean the spleen is very large. The color of the spleen is quite dark. It is halfway between a maroon and a purple color. So that is the color of the spleen. One major blood vessel takes blood into the spleen and that is called the splenic artery. And one major blood vessel takes the blood out of the spleen called the splenic vein. So splenic artery will be running across here, top of the pancreas towards the spleen and the splenic vein will be running out of the spleen back across this way on top of the pancreas. There are certain smaller blood vessels which go from the stomach to the spleen. There are five or six tiny little ones. They are called the short gastric vessels. So that is the major blood supply to the spleen. Next thing we are going to talk about is what the spleen does in our body. In a fetus, when the baby is in the mother's womb, under five months, spleen forms most of the blood in the fetus. After five months, the function of the spleen making blood starts becoming less and less and the bones start forming the blood. And by birth, almost all the blood is being made by the bones rather than the spleen. The second function of the spleen in adults is storage of the blood. In a normal size adult, like 70, 75 kilogram adult, which is about 160, 70 pounds adult, the spleen will store about 250 cc's or 250 mil of blood. So in an emergency, when a person is losing blood, say during surgery or injury or whatever, the spleen will squeeze that blood out to maintain the blood pressure and also to the maintain the function of the blood. Third very important function of the spleen is the immune function. Immune function means 
spleen protects our body against certain infections. And if the spleen is not there, those infections can cause grievous harm to our body. Last but not the least function of the spleen is cleaning our blood. So it acts like a filter, it acts like a sieve, and it sieves the dying blood. So as you know, our blood contains different cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. They are the three main cells in our blood. All these cells have a life. For example, red blood cells normally live to 120 days, which is about four months. And after that, they will die off. But the dying red blood cells also contain very important substances. One is iron and one is a protein called globin. So what the spleen does, it kills or eats up these dying red blood cells and uses the iron and the protein, sends it back to the liver to be used to make more red blood cells. I'm going to briefly expand on the immune function of the spleen. Spleen is the largest lymph gland in our body. And what is a lymph gland? As you have experienced sometimes, we get a sore throat. And when we get a sore throat, we get these lumps coming on the side of our neck. And these lumps are lymph glands. What they are trying to do is clean the infection from our throat and also stopping the infection from our throat to spread to different parts of our body. Spleen does the same thing. Spleen catches certain types of infections from bacteria and try and kill those bacteria and clears those bacteria from our body and stops those bacteria spreading to our body. And also in doing so, it protects our body from some very harmful infections. So if the spleen is not there, our body is more prone to developing those infections. And those type of infections, etc., I'm going to talk about in my future videos. I hope you found the video informative, gave you a bit more insight about the spleen. If you have any questions about the functions of the spleen, obviously spleen does many smaller functions as well, which I have not gone into because they are not as important as these four main functions. However, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer your questions the best I can. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like the video if you do. And gives us a thumb up if you can. And until next time, I see you soon.